outdated, busted, broken, ruined, obsolete, defunct, inoperative, dead, dead, dead. That is brilliant. Welcome back to another microbed.store. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. This is a waterfall door, and so was that. That also was a waterfall door. Why, I hear you ask. Well, because of that little word there. You see that? Yep. It's broken. Like a lot of bedrock YouTubers, I've got used to some of my builds just one day not working anymore. And that's okay, okay? That's why we love bedrock, right? Right? That just sometimes your build just breaks randomly. Yeah, that's great. I love it. I'm not getting a Mojang or Bedrock Edition. I love Bedrock Edition. You know I do. But sometimes when your build breaks, it does get a little annoying. <laughs> and you guys seem to think so too, because as soon as I put broken inside a title on a video, the comments go mad with people asking me to make an updated version. And normally that is absolutely fine. If it's a bug, well then I'll just say, wait, wait until Mojang fix that bug. But in this case, it wasn't a bug. This was Mojang changing the game. It was such a small update, you probably didn't even notice, but before the update, you could move a waterlogged block. So if you waterlogged stairs, for example, or a slab or a piston, and then you moved that block, the block and the water would move together, which is kind of useful. <laughs> but then after the update, you could move the block if it was waterlogged, but then the water would just vanish. <laughs> the water just disappears. Put simply, this is version two of the waterfall door and it doesn't use that mechanic, but it is still the same size, which is pretty cool. So here is our waterfall door, and yes, that is absolutely disgusting. But you can make it look as pretty as you like. I'll put a few examples on the screen now. You can fancy it up, whatever. <laughs> it's completely up to you. I've just kept it simple for the tutorial, if that's okay. <laughs> Ugliness aside, this door works really nicely. So if you can imagine, just imagine for a second, this is inside a cave or a fancy house, maybe? <laughs> You've got to use your imagination quite well there. <laughs> But this is your floor, of course, and that is your wall. And that, of course, is your waterfall. I am just so good at pointing out the obvious. So, you want to get into your secret base. What you have to do is come here, flick the lever. Whoops, don't do that. The waterfall floor, the waterfall splits. I'm keeping that in. And you walk through here into your secret base. And then when you're done, flick the lever again, and it returns to a normal waterfall. How cool. Is that not something I didn't do in the original video? I didn't actually have an option to put the lever inside the waterfall. So if you want that, you can. But of course, you can hide the lever later. You can move it wherever you like. Or of course, you can do a rest and dusky like this. And I'll show you how to do one of those at the end of this tutorial. Let's take a quick look at the redstone. It's pretty much the same size as last time. I think it is exactly the same size, which is quite impressive since I'm not using the pistons being waterlogged. I mean, it's not. It's not going to break any records for being the smallest build ever, but it's, you know, it's fairly cool. We have a Jeb door down here. We have the block swapper thingamajigs up here. That is the technical term, just to tell you. And uh, yeah, it works nice and quickly, and I quite like it anyway. Plus, you can have the lever here, which is pretty useful. <laughs> the only problem I see with this build, when you flick it like this, it just looks like someone's crying, doesn't it? But two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Why are you sad, Mr. Waterfall Door? What went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so stupid. So that's the build. So let's just get on with this tutorial before I make even more stupid jokes. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but for some strange reason, I can't read this list very fast today. My words are not coming out in the right order, and it's just going, it's just going all wrong. See? See what I mean? Words all the time coming out wrong order. Pretty much. So to start this build, you first need to determine where you want your door to actually be. So what I've done here is I've laid down a five by eight high slab, if you will. <laughs> so that's one, two, three, four, five. Perfect, by eight high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why five by eight, I hear you ask? Well, it's exactly the same size as that one. <laughs> so it just covers up the rest zone quite nicely. But the thing to notice, the thing to note, sorry, is that the water comes out from the sixth block high. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It'll be that block there, right in the middle. So the third block in, by it from either side, but six high. That is where your water is going to come out, and your door is going to be the two blocks down like that. Does that make sense? So there's one, two, three blocks between your door and the water. Okay, just make sure you've got that exactly right before we move on, because now we've got to do some digging. 
So first you dig out one, two blocks in front like this, all along. Dig out one to the right here, one to the left, and then dig out four back like this. One, two, three, four, and just make this into a nice rectangle. Okay, like that. So you should actually have a seven by seven square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Brilliant. Now, like I always say, this is not going to house much redstone in here. So you need to dig this out three more times. This hole needs to be four deep. Okay, like that. So you should now have a seven by seven by one, two, three, four deep hole. Fantastic. <laughs> And grass is already growing. <laughs> oh my word. Now before we do anything else, we just need to place in some pistons. So what I want you to do is to come through here. Now look to the left as you're going through your door. And place four pistons like so. One, two, three, four. So there should be a one block gap between that piston there and the entranceway. Does that make sense? Like if you have enough angles of it, hopefully you can place it correctly. <laughs> and then you need to place two pistons like this. One and two. Now this is actually your door, because if you were to place in some of your door blocks like this and to power these pistons like this, you can see those pistons extend these, pist these pistons and these two blocks. When they get here, they'll extend, creating your door. Then these ones will track first, like that, pulling your door back. And then these ones will pull the pistons and the door back, creating a little walkway. That's how your door works in a simple, <laughs> simply, simply put manner. <laughs> After that, come up to the top here, place a block in this hole here and count that as one two three four remove the first three count this as one and come up one two three remove the first two and then have a sticky piston facing downward here one to the front remove this block so those two pist sticky pistons should be like that directly in the middle looking toward the back two to the right and two to the left like that and then looking again toward the back Place three stick pistons like so. One, two, three, looking toward our wall here. And this is our block swapper for these blocks here. So this is how the uh, water gets channeled down through this side, <laughs> if that makes sense. Now that you have those in place, come up to the top here and place one, two, three decoration blocks, and then three more. One, two, three. Come to the left, place out one, two from the side here, and two from the right. One, two. Now our stairs are going to go along here and they're going to be waterlogged, okay? So it means the water will be flowing out this way. And this is why we have these pistons up here, because when these ones are extended like this, so are these pistons here, which is keeping our wall in place. And this block here is being contained up here. So any water flowing down here will be flowing directly from the middle and going down like that in a straight line, being our waterfall. All right, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> then when you want to open your door, these pistons retract. And so these two, like that, bringing those pistons up, allowing the water to flow. But at the same time, these two pistons are extending, and this piston is extending, causing this block to be here, splitting our water. So now we have a waterfall going down this side, and we have a waterfall going down this side, which means we get two streams of water going down either side of our door for that door to open. But for now, we'll just remove these resting blocks. Brilliant. So now finally, we're on to some proper redstone. So we're going to work on this top section first. So when these two are on, this one needs to be off. And when this one is on, these two need to be off, which sounds much more complicated than it actually is. <laughs> so when you face three blocks out like this, one, two, three, a torch here and two bits of dust, two blocks down, remove the middle and a torch here. And then repeat that on this side. So three blocks out, one, two, three, torch, dust on both, two blocks down, move the first middle one, sorry, and torch here. Then on this block here, we need to place another block out. That's going to have dust on it. That dust is going to run into a block. On the side of this block, at the front, we need a torch and then dust here. So when I flick this lever, I don't know if I put a lever here first, <laughs> if I flick this lever on this block, this block is going to get powered. That dust is going to turn off, allowing that block to unpower, powering this torch. That, to that dust is then going to turn on, extending these pistons. That's fair enough, isn't it? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So this torch tower is just a way of getting dust or getting power, sorry, from down here up to here. This side is slightly different, different, of course, because we have this section. 
But at the same time, this dust turns on, powering this block, forcing this dust... Sorry, this is a good, <laughs> it's a good day. Forcing this torch to turn off and allowing this dust to turn off, which will obviously retract these two pistons here, moving that piston up. Like that. So if they worked in sync, it would be something like that, and then like that. So this would be uh, if the door was on, because water would go down this side and this side, and this would be if the door was closed, because only water would go down the middle. But of course, at the moment, as you can see, <laughs> it's not very flush with the wall, is it? <laughs> so we need to extend these pistons when they're down here. And we also need to wire these up to work in sync. So to do the latter first, we're going to remove these two levers. We're going to place a block here and another one down, and you guessed it, another torch. <laughs> then we're going to place a block next to this one and down. Move this one and dust and then repeat that on this side so two blocks down move the middle torch block to the side one down move this one and dust temporary block here and one up and then a lever on here and you can see now we have them in sync so they're firing exactly at the same time obviously but they are inverted because we added another torch now we said earlier we want these pistons to extend when they're down here so of course be flush with the wall. So when this is down like this, we want this one to extend. And then when this block gets unpowered, we want this piston to retract. And then to retract it like that. And then now that these pistons are down here, we want these ones to extend. Like so. Oh, not that one. Whoops, what have I done? <laughs> that was stupid. When these pistons are down here, we want these ones to extend like this, being flush with with the uh, wall. Now to do that, it's really, really simple. This one especially. <laughs> to power this piston when it's down here, is just so easy. All you have to do is place dust here, a block here, and one here. Why does that work? Well, because that block is powered, so is that dust, and as you can see, that dust is not connected to anything, so it's omnidirectional, it's going in every direction. So it's powering this block, this block is up there, and this block. These two blocks are not doing anything because they're not touching anything, but that block is being powered, which is directly, obviously, underneath that piston, which, of course, is extended. Does that make sense? <laughs> so as, if, as soon as I uh, flick that lever off, that dust turns off, retracting this piston, and then a few ticks later, this piston retracts it and the block. Like that. So that's the middle piston completely taken care of. But how about these side pistons? Well, you'd be pleased to know they're very simple as well. All we have to do is place a piston facing like this, facing toward the middle, and a torch. And that's it. Oh, and on this right hand side, so the right hand side, if you're looking toward the back, this one needs an, an immovable block here, okay? This side won't in a second, but this side does need it. Okay, <laughs> that's why there is one obsidian on the list. <laughs> so how does this work? Well, at the moment, this piston is not trying to extend. It is off. So this torch is on, which is powering this block, which is next to this piston, which is extending it. As soon as I flick that lever, that dust is going to turn on, powering this block, obviously unpowering this torch, setting off the chain up here. But at the same time, as this block is powered, this piston will try to extend. It can't because this obsidian is in the way, but this torch will then turn off unpowering this block, allowing this piston to retract, and then a few ticks later, these pistons will retract, moving the block and the piston up, like this. You see that? Perfect. So on this side, it's exactly the same, minus uh, the obsidian if you don't want. So you can just place a piston and a torch, but if you want to, you can place the next obsidian. It's completely up to you. I personally do just to make the build a little bit quieter, <laughs> but it is up to you. That is that section completely done. That's the door open. Brilliant. So water will be flowing out both sides. And then that's the door closed because the water is only flowing down the middle. That's the top section almost completely done. I say almost because, of course, we haven't put in the water yet. But obviously, you don't want to put your water in yet and flood your base. So we'll do that at the end. <laughs> so we'll work down here now on the Jeb door. So first, you grab some decoration blocks and place one, two, three blocks out like this. We're placing in these so you don't see any of the redstone as you're walking through. <laughs> Then place three blocks here, one, two, three, and one, two, three blocks here. And then th three flooring blocks here, one, two, three, and two more decoration blocks here, one and two. So now you have, oops, <laughs> a nice walkway going through here. All right. Now place in your lever here. Even if you don't want to place your lever at the end, I would recommend just placing it in now. Come around here, place some dust like this, and then have a repeater going toward that block. So now if I flick that lever, we should have this bit activating and deactivating. So that's on. And that's off. Now to wire up our Jeb door. So come over to this right hand side here and place a torch on the side of that block here. 
So as that dust turns on, that torch will turn off. Dust here, that's why we had to have an obsidian here, because of course there's dust actually on that block here, which would connect if there was no block there. <laughs> then you need your piece of glass down like this. Dust, temporary block here, and one down. Remove this one and dust. Then you need a block here, one down, remove this one, and one to the left. And dust like this, one, two, make sure you're following it exactly. Then I want you to come down here, place a torch off the side of that block there. Temporary block underneath that torch. Block to the right, remove this block. A repeater coming away from that torch on one tick delay. Going into a block with dust on it. Temporary block here, one up. Remove this one. A torch on top of that block. A torch, sorry, a block on top of that torch. And then you need to have dust here. One, two, three. And then finally, come down here. Place a piston facing toward the middle. Not like that, facing toward the middle. And a torch like that. So that should be our Jeb door done. So how does this section work? Well, when I flick this lever off, this dust obviously turns off, obviously unpowering this top section up here. But at the same time, it allows this torch to turn on. When this torch turns on, of course, it powers this dust. That's why we have to have an obsidian there, because that dust would be connecting to that dust there. And the dust is going to run down like this. One, two, three, four, five. There's two things to note here. This block is getting powered because that dust is on it. And of course, that block is being powered because the dust is running toward it. Nothing will happen though, because look, nothing is touching that block and nothing is touching this block at the moment. <laughs> That's significant. When that dust turns on, at the same time, this do this, this, torch, <laughs> this torch turns off, unpowering this repeater. After one tick, this repeater unpowers, unpowering this block, unpowering this dust, unpowering this block, allowing this torch to turn on, which obviously powers this piston. It also powers this block, which powers this piston, and it also powers this dust, which powers this piston. But at the same time as this block is unpowering, this piston gets retracted, and allowing this torch to turn on, powering this piston. So put simply, these four pistons extend at the same time, moving those two pistons here, which would then extend. Why? Well, because this dust is running to this block, powering this block, which is directly underneath that piston, so that piston would then extend. And at the same time, this dust is on this block next to this piston, which would extend it, like that. What did I just remove from there? <laughs> oh, just the block, that's fine. <laughs> so when I flick that lever off, we should, have, we should see our door closing. Perfect. So when I flick this lever on, of course this dust is going to turn on naturally because it's next to that lever. <laughs> that torch is going to turn off, allowing this dust to turn off. Now, most notably, it's going to unpower this block and it's going to unpower this block, meaning that these two pistons will then retract because they're not going to be getting power from anywhere. At the same time as this, this torch is turning on. After one tick, this repeater will take that power and power this block, powering this dust, which is going to power this block, allowing this torch to turn off, which is going to unpower this block and unpower this dust. So these three pistons will then retract. And at the same time as that, this piston will look forced to extend, allowing this torch to turn back off, which will retract these four pistons at the same time, which is just in time for these ones to retract and then these ones pull across. I hope that makes sense. Hold on, I'll remove these blocks so you can see. Like this. Does that make sense? Now we're on to our final section, which is this bit down here. But before we do that, we need to place in some flooring blocks. So place down five blocks like this, three, four, five, and then five here, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So at the moment, if we placed water in here, you can see it flow down here, and then create a massive puddle flooding our base. And of course, we don't want that. So when we have our door closed like this, we want this block to retract down one block to here. Like that. The water would flow into that hole like that. But when we open our door like this, we want this block then to be pushed up so we can have a walkway. And then we need to remove these blocks here and place them down like this. So the water flows into these two holes. Does that make sense? So that would be 
open and that would be closed. So how do we do that? Well, to do that, we need to place in just a few pistons. So move these blocks like this and come down one, two blocks from this block here and have three sticky pistons facing upward like this. One, two, and three. Move these two blocks and then have three of your flooring blocks like this. One, two, and three. You know it's in line if it's like that. Make sure you have these three blocks here as well. Okay? <laughs> you don't want water flowing off into your redstone. Come down here. Place a block on the middle piston like this, a torch on the left, and a torch on the right. And this is how it works. So we're going to power this block, which obviously extends this piston in the middle. So that would be if your uh, waterfall is being split, they'd go like that. And then when they go like this and the waterfall goes down here, then of course this is going to switch over. Perfect. But the one thing we have to be careful about here is the delay. Because of course water takes a while to drain. So this needs to have a quite significant delay between being on and being off. Otherwise, you're going to have a very wet base. <laughs> now to create that delay, it's very, very simple. All you do is come around this side. And firstly, you place a piston like this underneath this block going toward the front of your build. It's up to you, but you can place an obsidian here as long as you do not place an obsidian here. Okay? Do not place one here, otherwise you will have a broken wall. <laughs> But you can place one up here. Here, It's completely up to you, though. It's just if you want your build a bit quieter. On the side of that piston, have a torch. On top of that torch, have a block. Block next to this one. And then have a repeater on three tick delay. So place it down and press it twice, once and twice. And that repeater is going to run into a block. Okay. Then have a line of blocks like this. One, two, three. Like that. And on each of these, going toward the right of our build, away from this block, we need three repeaters on four tick delays. That means you place it down and press it three times. Once, twice, thrice. <laughs> and the same here, and the same here. So three repeaters on four tick delay. And they go into a block. Then you need to place another piston facing downwards. You can place a piece of piston underneath it if you want to, again, to make it quieter. I am, but it's completely up to you. You don't have to. Then a torch like this. And dust. And that is your delay. And that's pretty much every rest all the redstone completely done. You can see I have a delay and then they open. And then when it switches over, there's the delay. And then it opens. <laughs> now you might know how this bit works already, but when this repeater turns on, it powers this block, uh, making this piston extend, forcing this torch to turn off. That block unpowers. After three ticks, this repeater unpowers, unpowering this block. After four, eight, 12 ticks of delay, this block unpowers, causing this piston to retract. That piston is trying to extend, but it can't. That torch then will turn on, powering this dust, which obviously powers this block, extending this piston, but it also at the same time unpowers these two uh, torches, allowing these two pistons to retract. And then, of course, when the uh, repeater does the opposite, then these three do the opposite. And now for the scary moment, we're going to place in the water. <laughs> so come around the back here. And we need to place in three stairs. Now, stairs have a really cool property that if you place them like this, the water will try to flow out the front and the side, but it won't flow out the bottom and it won't flow out the back, which is pretty cool. If you placed it like, uh, like this, it would definitely flow out the bottom, it would flow out the sides, but again, it wouldn't flow out the back. It's a really bizarre thing, but yeah, it works. So <laughs> place your stairs like this. One, two, and three facing toward the front make sure they're facing like mine okay then we grab our water and place them like this i'm not sure why i grabbed three water buckets yep don't know why <laughs> but you should see here the water flows down the middle perfect and then just so you can't see through your build from the uh, from the front just place in three blocks like this one two and three so now when i fix this lever hopefully this should work these retract allowing the water to flow through and there we are these open up perfectly in time and that's why we have that delay can you see it's just perfectly in time with this water flowing down to go into the hole any quicker and you'd have just a massive spillage <laughs> so that's why we have it like this perfect now of course just to finish up you can place in your flooring whatever you can 
have your wall up. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. So that's the main build completely done. But what happens if you wanted to move the lever or even still, like we mentioned earlier, have a redstone dust key? Well, thankfully, that's very, very simple. Just to interrupt myself a second here, if I sound different, it's because this clip was recorded many days after <laughs> that original clip. So I'm sorry if I sound completely different. Um, it's just, you know, day to day, your voice changes. So sorry about that. <laughs> Some of you may have not even noticed, so I don't know what I'm telling you. Anyway, it's in the video now, so <laughs> that's good. So to move the lever, like I said, it's very, very simple. First of all, remove the lever, funny enough. <laughs> then come around to this side. Or actually, you can come around to this side. It's completely up to you. I'm just going to do it from the left side personally. Next to this piston, have another regular piston facing upward, like this. In this gap here, you can place an immovable block. It's completely up to you doesn't matter. You don't need one. It just makes the build a little bit quieter. Like I said, it's completely up to you. Come around to the other side and place a torch on that piston there to activate our door, as you can see. And you've probably guessed how this bit works now. So to move the lever, all you have to do is power this piston. And that's it. <laughs> it's that simple. So of course, you could have a line like this of rest and dust. And of course, when that uh, dust is powered, that block could be powered powering that piston, which is obviously going to turn off that torch, unpowering our door. Like that. Or you could have it like this. So, whoops. So you power the block next to that piston. That will also turn the torch off. It's completely up to you. It's very, very versatile. But it's very, very easy to move the lever. See? <laughs> And like I said, if you wanted to have it on the other side, just mirror what I've done here. But how about a redstone dust key? Well, this is a little bit more complex than just moving the lever, but don't worry, it's nothing too strenuous. So again, remove the lever first. And we're going to place our redstone dust key here. Of course, you can move this wherever you like, but I'm just showing you here for the ultimate slim build. <laughs> so it's up to you. Now, this is where we're going to place our dust. So if we wanted to go in to bit through this uh, waterfall door, I'd place my dust here. Okay? So... Off the side of this flooring block, underneath our wall block, you need to place a torch here, which should turn on naturally because the torch is on naturally. <laughs> Why do I need to explain that? <laughs> underneath the torch, place a block and another one down. Remove the first one and have dust there. That dust, of course, is going to turn on because that torch is on. Then have a block here. A torch here, which should turn off because that dust is powering that block, forcing this torch to turn off. And then have a sticky piston on top of that torch facing toward this block and make sure it's a sticky piston. So if I were to place some dust on here, you can see it gets shunted off. Why? <laughs> well, when I place dust on there, this torch, of course, is powering this block, so that dust would get powered. That would power this block, forcing this torch to turn off, which makes sense. So when that dust, when that torch turns off, sorry, that dust turns off, unpowering this block, allowing this torch to power, which is obviously gonna power this piston, moving this block, here shunting off a rest and dust now the piston retracts because of two reasons firstly we're actually creating a rest stone clock here if you have a block like this i just do it again i have a torch there and dust can you see it flashes on and off on and off because it's going like this it doesn't <laughs> that torch is going on off on off on off because it's getting powered unpowered powered unpowered powered unpowered so that's why that dust turns on very quickly even if that didn't happen it doesn't matter because, of course, the dust being fired off by the block would naturally make this block become unpowered again, which would allow this torch to turn on, this dust would turn on, and you get the picture this uh, piston would retract. So it's actually getting punched off and retracted because of the clock, but it would happen either way. And I'm realizing that probably doesn't make much sense. <laughs> this was meant to be simple. <laughs> Sorry. To finish off our resident dust key, come around the side here, place a block next to this one here. And from this block, we want a repeater on one tick delay. So just place a repeater down like that. It should be on. Then a block here, a torch on top, which should be off. A block on top of that torch, a torch on that, which should be on. And then you want three observers facing upward off this torch. So one, so the dots should be facing toward the sky and the face toward the torch. Two, three. Then a block, then a torch off the side. So when I place the dust here, that torch should quickly turn off and then on. Brilliant. Why does that happen? Well, when this dust turns off and then on very quickly, of course, this block unpowers. No, yes, yeah, sorry, unpowers and then powers very quickly. After one tick, 
this repeater unpowers and powers very quickly, causing this block to unpower and power very quickly. That torch flashes on very briefly. The same with this block. That torch flashes off very quickly. When that torch flashes off very quickly, this observer detects that one and fires. This observer detects that one firing and fires. This observer detects that one firing and fires into this block. So it causes a quick pulse into this block, which briefly turns off this torch. So the torch goes off and then on very, very quickly. It's basically just a long chain from this point up to this point. We couldn't use uh, blocks and redstone uh, torches all the way up because we've got dust and things like that. And um, yeah, it would basically just connect with the redstone. <laughs> so now, to make this into an on and off, we need to add, you guessed it, a T flip flop. So to do that, place a block here. Going toward this dust, you want to compare it all like that. Whoops, that's bizarre, <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, running into that dust. Then a block here. Then you need to place a dropper facing upward off the side of that block. Crouch, and make sure you do crouch, and place a dropper facing this way, to the left, or toward the back of the build, sorry. Then crouch again and place a hopper going toward this bottom dropper. Make sure it's facing toward it like that. Come up here, crouch again, and place another comparator here. And then in the top or bottom dropper, it doesn't really matter, place in any old block you don't mind throwing away. Now this, oh, and lastly, sorry, crouch and place some dust on top of that dropper. And can you see there? A T flip flop just activated. Now, if you don't know what a T flip flop is, basically it's just turning a pulse into a rest of the line. It basically turns a button into a lever because when this T flip flop gets powered, uh, a block gets moved from this top dropper, gets fired out, and then goes into a bottom dropper. And then when it gets uh, powered again, the item gets shot up from the bottom dropper to the top dropper. And that's basically how it works. So at the moment it's on, but when it when this torch turns off and then on very briefly, it goes off, it resets, then on again, and it powers. So it only powers when it goes back on. You see there? <laughs> I hope that makes sense. It, it's kind of hard to understand, but basically, even though it's powered now, it doesn't matter. As long as it has a brief second where it's off, it will, it will relax, <laughs> and then it will get powered again. <laughs> relax? What am I talking about? Now, we have a block here because a comparator can actually take a redstone signal through a block. Even though that comparator is the other side of that block, it can actually read what's in this dropper here. So at the moment, that comparator should be off, which it is, because that bottom dropper has nothing in it. But as soon as it goes round, and then there's something in this dropper, you just heard everything activated because now that comparator is on, even though it's uh, looking like it's going from the block, but it's not it's going from the dropper, and it's powering this dust here on a wrist of signal strength of one, but it doesn't matter because that repeater can take that wrist of signal strength, and so can this torch. I hope that made sense. <laughs> okay, you might say, I can activate my redstone dust key from this side, opening my door, but how do I close it once I've gone through the door? <laughs> well, thankfully, that's very, very simple. Basically, you have to power or unpower and power again this T flip flop. So you could just run a repeater going into this block with a button, and that'll work. You see? But that's not very compact, as you can see. <laughs> we'll be going off miles over here. So what happens if we want to place a button here? So you can carry on our walkway like this. Well, obviously, when I press that button, that block is going to get powered. So we can use that to our advantage. We're going to place a torch on top. Then we're going to place a block with a repeater coming away from that torch into a block, a torch up, a block, and dust. And that's it. <laughs> because when we power uh, this button, Sorry, when we press, not power this button, when we press this button, this block is going to get powered and unpowered very briefly. That torch turns off and then on, causing this repeater to turn off and then on, unpowering and powering this block. This torch turns on and then off for a brief second. This block gets power for a brief second, then turns off, causing obviously this dust to turn on and then off, which of course powers this block and then unpowers it, causing this torch to turn off and then on, Pretty much the same as this, causing this dust to turn off. That does nothing, but when it turns back on, it's going to fire a T flip flop. Like this, you see? I go in this side. Beautiful. And then when I'm done, press the button. And there we are. It closes. And of course, if you want to open it again from this side, you can. Just like that, because that's why we use a T flip flop. 
Beautiful. <laughs> now, hopefully, this build won't break for the foreseeable future. At least, come on, give me a few months. <laughs> Please, Mojang. <laughs> anyway, you know what I'm going to say? Thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video or like this design, please give us a like and if you loved it make sure you subscribe with that wonderful subscribe button for more awesome content anyway i'll catch you guys in the next one and i'll see you later bye